In this video, we will discuss how to read a communication research article. Research articles are technical writing documents, and as such, you are not expected to read them word for word. A lot of times in your professional career, when you work for a PR company or a pharmaceutical company or some other type of organization, you will be asked to process a lot of information in a very short period of time. Sometimes you may be given a stack of articles this thick or thicker to read within just a few hours. The trick to this is that you are not supposed to read those articles word for word. There is a way to read them. And so today I'm going to show you what a typical research article is made of and what information you can find in each section. And I'll show you how to best go about reading this type of publication. So before we proceed, I would like you to open Flanagan 2005 article on instant messaging, which is found within the same folder on Blackboard and have it uh, alongside as you watch this video. So a typical research article is uh, composed of six parts. Well, there's actually a seventh part, which is references, but that one we will not talk about here. It begins with a title, obviously, that just tells us um, the topic of the paper. The next bit that comes, and if you look at Flanagan, that is going to be at the top of page 175, and it's written in italics. That's the abstract. The abstract is simply the summary of the entire article. So this is something very useful because you can just read the abstract, and if it's a well-written one, you will have a good idea of what the article is about. The abstract is followed by the literature review. On Flanagan, this goes from page 175 to 178. It is rarely headed by a title, literature review. Instead, the author simply starts writing and sometimes the sections of this uh, portion of a paper have subheadings depending on the different topics that the author discusses. The purpose of the literature review is to summarize, as the name says it, the literature, the research publications that have already been um, published in other periodicals, in other um, books and journals, to tell the reader what the um, scholars already know on the topic, what has been discovered already on the topic. If you look at Flanagan again, you will see that he talks about the um, issue of instant messaging, he talks about the different uses of it, he talks about the different theories that have been used to discuss this topic. So basically he summarizes for you, the reader, everything that we know about his topic of research, which is instant messaging among young people up to date. And toward the end of the literature review, he introduces his own research questions and so things that he wants to know that have not yet been um, found in research by previous researchers. So that's the literature review. Then the next section of the article is the methods section. And the methods section tells you how the author studied what he proposed to study. So what was the methodology? What were the research designs that he used? Uh, this is actually what our class is about, research methods, mostly. So a person can use surveys or experiments or a focus group or an in-depth interview to answer research questions that they pose. Um, the study may involve live people or sometimes instead of interviewing or surveying people, you may examine documents that exist, you know, if you do histor historical research, for example, for archival research, you may go into archives and just look at uh, published documents. Now, you may um, study videos, for instance, I do a lot of research involving YouTube videos, so this is what I focus on. And in the methods section, the author describes what the um, sample was under analysis. Was it people? Was it things? Was it objects? Was it messages? And also how the sample was studied. What was the methodology that was used? What was the research design that was used? 
So this section sort of is important if you're trying to evaluate how good this publication is, how good the data is that they are presenting. By looking at the methods section, you can see if the research was well executed, if it was rigorous, if all the important precautions were followed to make sure that you have valid results. Then we have the results section. And very often, if this is a quantitative research, um, article, you're going to see a lot of numbers and statistics which summarize what the author has found in mathematical terms. Oftentimes you will also see tables there. And finally, the results section is followed by the discussion section. This is very useful for the reader, especially if you don't really know statistics that, that well, because the discussion section summarizes what the author said in the results section, but only using words and sort of generalizing uh, what the findings have showed. So this is a very nice rounding off of what the researcher discussed in the results section, but it is done in a language that you can understand that most of us can understand. So if you have difficulty reading results, you don't understand statistics, if you go into the discussion, it's going to summarize the findings just using words and narrative. So let's talk about now what information um, you really need from each section. Because you don't really need everything from every section. You just have to look inside each of these sections for the information that's going to be important for you so that you know what the article talked about. So here you have a chart that tells you what you need to know from a typical research article and also where to find this information. Most importantly, you want to know what was the purpose of the study? What was the author trying to find? That information you will find in the abstract and also in the beginning of literature review, in the very first pages of the literature review. One or two first pages is where the author sort of presents his case and discusses what information they're trying to find. The next important information you need is um, the hypotheses or research questions. I'm using the symbol RQ for short here that the uh, researchers proposed that guided the study. Those you will usually find in the abstract and also at the end of the literature review. If you look at the Flanagan example once again, you will see that the research questions are actually presented very prominently in the later part of a literature review. They are italicized, they are indented, they're very clearly numbered, and so they're very easy to see. Specifically so that you don't have to weed your way through the whole thing to find that information. You also want to know a little bit about the methodology that the researcher used to find his or her information. So most importantly, what was the research design? By that I mean, was it an experiment? Was it a survey? Was it a content analysis? Was it an interview? Was it um, archival research? Was it a focus group? Was it a participant observation study? Was it a mixture of different research designs that was used? So what was the methodology? What was the design that the author used to collect the data? Who were the participants? Or if the uh, sample did not involve people, what artifacts did the author study? So was it objects, buildings, um, books, articles, videos? So what um, was the sample under study? And finally, what procedure that the, did the researcher use to study um, the, the, the sample under analysis? So for instance, if it was an experiment, you should discuss step by step what happened in that experiment. Now, if it was an interview, um, you should know how did the author go about recruiting the participants, what, what did the interview involve, how long was the interview, that kind of thing. It again tells you more about the quality of this research. Then of course we want to know the findings of the study and the best places to find those is our abstract. The abstract will really briefly summarize the findings. The discussion, like I said, um, discusses the findings in terms of words and narrative. So it's very useful and easy to read. And of course, the results where you also oftentimes see some statistical information. And the final piece that you need to know are the limitations of the study. Every study that is done has some shortcomings, some weaknesses. And so those are the limitations of the study. And you need to know it because again, it tells you how good that information is that you are reading. Can you rely on it? Does it? Is it missing something? Is there something in the way that they did the study that is weak 
and maybe compromise the information they collected. And the limitations are always um, presented in the discussion, usually toward the very end of the section. Now, in terms of the sequence in which you should read, I'm going to go back one slide. You're not supposed to read the um, article in this sequence, running from the title to the discussion. It's a waste of time. Typically, if you notice, because the abstract is probably the most useful section of the article, you should always start by reading the abstract. The next place to go, once you know the basics, is the discussion because it summarizes what the authors found. The third thing to cover would be the method section because that's where you find how the information was collected. And then you can either move on from there to the literature review and read the sections that you think are relevant, that you think are going to be useful. Sometimes we also read literature reviews so that we find additional literature, additional uh, publications or articles on the same topic. Sometimes we read it because we do not understand some concepts that the authors are using. So the literature review is going to contain the definitions of those concepts. Sometimes it's just interesting to read. So of course, you can read the whole thing. And the results. The results, um, like I said, oftentimes contain statistical information, but not always. This is a typical structure of a quantitative research article, like the Flanagan article that you have in front of you. But not every article follows this structure. If it's a qualitative research article that does not involve um, collection of data and analysis through statistical means, oftentimes the structure will be a little bit different. It will begin with a title and abstract and literature review, but then the last three sections, method, results, and discussion, are oftentimes blurred. You're going to see that the method and results are often blended, and in fact, all three are often blended into just one section, which might be called findings. Or um, instead of method, you may have the term data collection or data analysis, and then the other section is going to be called findings, but you're not going to have the results and discussion separately. Now, that makes sense because qualitative research does not involve statistics. So you only have narrative, you only have text to discuss things. And so um, oftentimes authors just choose to merge those two sections into one. And the last thing I wanted to um, talk to you about a little bit are some common useful speed reading techniques that I use every day that help me get through large stacks of research articles quickly. The number one rule whenever you are reading, especially something that's challenging, is you have to eliminate the distractions. So clean your desk. Have only that piece of research in front of you to read. Move all the other things out of sight. Close the door. Switch off your cell phone so that you can only focus on the task at hand. And this way you're going to be done much quicker. Know what you're looking for. So remember that table I showed you. That lists the information that you have to know the purpose, the research questions, the method, um, the findings, and the limitations. Know what you are looking for and look for it. So you're not just combing through the article for nothing. You are specifically focused on particular pieces of information, and I guarantee you that will let you read it very, very quickly. Set the time limit. So give yourself 10 minutes or even 5 minutes if you're a really good reader. And have a clock or timer in front of you that's going to motivate you to get done faster. It's really useful to do a one minute skim read of larger sections like literature review ahead of time or even skim through the whole article first. Look just at the headings at the first and maybe last sentence in each big paragraph. Don't take longer than one minute. Just take a bird's eye view of the whole piece. That's going to let you orient your mind better. Use a finger or a pencil for pace. So move the finger or pencil along the lines like this so that um, your eyes are forced to follow it at a specific speed and that helps you get the information faster. It is useful to skip the first and the last word in each line. So this one and this one would be skipped because if you read through the whole thing, you can still understand everything without those two words in each line. And a really big time saver, a lot of us are used to highlighting things. You know, you grab a highlighter and you run your highlighter or pencil along the line. It takes a lot of effort. 
and if you want to highlight something, it's much better to mark important passages vertically like this. It saves you a lot of time and this way you can go back to the piece that you highlighted still and see it and, um, and also your paper looks cleaner. So these were the principles of reading um, using speed reading techniques. So I've talked about the sections of a research article, the information that you have to find from each section, and also the speed reading techniques. And we talked about the sequence also in which you read a research article. So now I would like you to move on to an activity that is um, posted within the Blackboard folder where you found this video and um, use this knowledge to find some information from the two articles that are posted in this section.